name's Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. In today's case, we're presented with a fish that was a bit boisterous in its attempt to eat some fish food and then it ripped its jaw uh, open. What happened is that there's the pre-mandibular or pre-maxillary uh, bone is fractured um, and we have to put a prosthetic implant to try and stabilize it so that it will be able to heal in place. So we will show you the procedure. Let's see, does he bite my finger? Um, he usually does, but he's a bit sore at the moment. He's, not, he's nowhere near as friendly as he is. What we're doing here is transferring Harry, our koi fish patient, into an anesthetic bath. So this procedure that we're about to do is going to be a painful one, so this is the reason why we're using anesthetics. We're fashioning a piece of wire to act as an external fixature, commonly known as a mouth splint or a brace. This will hold the broken parts of the jaw together still so that it can heal properly. Now this piece of metal is going to be hard against the lips so we're going to put up some airline tubing, soft silicon to make for comfort and also to attach stitches to. We remove this loose flap of skin which was part of his injury because it wouldn't have a good blood supply and so it would become infected. An infection was confirmed when I examined it under histology. So we're positioning Harry here so that we can attach his mouth brace. So what I'll do is I'll probably go all the way around the whole mouth. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So we're inserting the first uh, lot of sutures. We're using a simple interrupted pattern. First one is to anchor the mouth brace in position. We go through the soft tissues behind the pre-maxillary bone and then through the silicon of the tubing around the split. So when we're tying this knot, uh, we're making sure that we don't tie it too tightly to prevent um, any compression of the soft tissues around the lips. The suture material we're using is nylon. It's a monofilament, so that stops wicking of water and bacteria into the points of entry and exit. Every now and then we need to maintain anesthesia and oxygenation of the gills so we intermittently pump either water or anesthetic. This is a very invasive procedure as you can see we're going to put a lot of um, needles and sutures through his lips uh, it's a very sensitive area so to make it as stress free pain free and comfortable for Harry uh, we provide him with surgical level of anesthesia and we also given him some anti-inflammatories as painkillers for post-operative pain relief Harry. and what we've given him is flunixin at 0 0.5 milligrams per kilogram body weight now many drugs are not registered for use in fish so as veterinarians and according to Vet Surgeons Board, we're able to use these off the label. Yeah, look at that. That's open to right up properly now. Okay. Use it. Just a little bit symmetrical. We've sped up this video to save you time. The mouth is a highly mobile part of the body moving all day long, just eating and breathing. So we need to make sure that the pre-mandibular bone is firmly braced by infilling with more stitches. Uh, this will ensure good apposition and stability and so it will heal properly. To prevent any potential infection, we're going to spray this wound with betadine. Now we're reviving Harry uh, from anesthesia. So we're going to make use of the waterfall area as a highly oxygenated water source and we can move him back and forth or hold him under the waterfall. Now this is 5 days post procedure. 
we're doing a routine checkup on Harry. We're just checking, observing him, how he's swimming, his relationship with other fish, and whether he's able to eat properly. During this checkup, we're also examining the brakes, making sure it's still in position and also that there's no signs of infection around the lips. So two days ago at our checkup we found that Harry's lip is fully healed so um, now we're going to remove his brace. This is not going to be a painful procedure, so we've got him only under light sedation. So we're using a special set of scissors with a curved cutting edge. This will give you a good grip of the sutures. And you've got to be careful to remove all suture material so that you don't leave any behind because that could be avenues for bacterial infection and also irritation. Now we're just going to give another spray of betadine just to prevent infection. Now we're going to revive him again under the waterfall as previously. So, Harry is fully healed now. And as you can see, his jaw movements are working, he can breathe, he can eat because the function of the mouth is actually to create a seal so they can create suction in order to be able to prehand food and also to be able to breathe to actually pump uh, water through his gills. Um, and you can see Harry is moving back and very comfortable with his life. So thank you for watching, make sure you subscribe to get updates of our future videos and have a fantastic week.